Hello and welcome to my garden and the dinosaurs who live there. It is a beautiful autumnal day today. The sun's shining, the sky's blue and there's practically not a breath of wind. And actually I should be feeling very chipper because it's just a lovely day to do a garden tour, which I'm going to do. But um, I'm afraid I have some sad news to share and unfortunately um, this week, my, one of my darling cats, Henry, passed away. Uh, he had been suffering with, a, with congenital heart failure for some time. And he, whilst he was quite perky, he had a sudden heart attack. And yeah, that was it. We were there with him and did what we could to comfort him. But really, there was nothing that we could do to, to prevent it. Um, so yeah, so we're gutted, absolutely gutted. Uh, Henry was 16 and we still have his brother Colin, also 16. Um, Colin appears um, in quite a number of videos, Colin tends to follow me around the garden. Henry uh, didn't appear in too many, he enjoyed the garden but didn't tend to try and get in front of the video camera. But I'll pop up a couple of photographs so you can see who I'm talking about. And um, yeah, that's sorry to share the bad news. Um, it's so, so sad and I'm just absolutely gutted. Tom and I both are. Anyway, <laughs> that said, he had a wonderful life and I've got a lot to be thankful for. So, um, yeah, let's just park that for the moment and let's have a look around my September garden. So in the past couple of months, I have split my garden tour into three chunks so that um, I could focus on different areas of the garden and not make one humongous great long uh, garden tour video. I think in September um, I'm just going to put it back into one video and uh, just focus on some of the, the more um, salient points in the things that I'm, I'm growing and um, that'll give you a flavour for how things are, are doing in the garden. So here I am on the deck uh, just outside the house, so I think I'll just start here and I'll just zip round what has changed uh, between uh, the last tour and this one. So here's my veg trug. It is quite sunny, so I'm going to have to play dodge the dodge the video, eh, dodge the video, dodge the shadow. Um, you can see my beetroot is doing okay, I think. Uh, Colin tends to come up here and have a lie down in the, the good weather, so this spot here tends to be Colin's spot. Then we have some Lakeland lettuce at the front here, and that is doing really nicely. The radish at the back has bolted, so um, that will just come out. And if I just move over to um, the next little stand here, I've got some more Lakeland lettuce in here which is coming on okay. And then in the Tom and I's anniversary box, things are just sort of dying back. Now you can see that the little hosta here is just starting to be nibbled and my um, flowers here, my annuals have just, uh, just about gone now. 
Snapdragons are still giving a little bit of colour at the back, but, but nothing too spectacular right now. Uh, looking over at these veg trogs, and I'm trying to avoid my washing because <laughs> it's such a nice day. I've got washing hanging out. So we can see some turnip here that's that's growing on well. Uh, here is some my Rudbeckia. It's not been the most startling of Rudbeckia this year, I have to say, but uh, it keeps coming and I keep cutting it and that's super. And then over here we have some herbs. We've got uh, a lemon thyme here lemon balm which is looking a bit ropey although the fresh stuff is looking a bit better i, I don't really do much with lemon balm I, I thought i would start using it in cooking but um i'm thinking maybe fish anyone get any ideas on nice um uh, 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 ways of using lemon balm that would be fantastic and then we've got some sorrel here that um is sitting in the back there and then three more lakeland lettuce and if I just carry on to this last little raised trug, veg trug, we've got a couple of pak choy and three Lakeland lettuce. So I'm hoping that I'll get some lettuce through the through the autumn. I don't know whether I've got anything else sown. I think there's some winter uh, lettuce varieties that I can pop in. I should do that actually. Down in this little um, kitchen basin, I have got some more turnip, which the tops are growing quite well at the moment, but I don't have any any roots forming as yet, but hopefully that will come. If we just look at the corner here, uh, my tomato, I've already um, been harvesting tomatoes from this, but you can see um, I'm getting a nice crop of tomatoes on this little plant. This was a, a grafted plant that I bought in but it's um, it's looking nice. I think it's Shirley. Um, could be wrong. I lost the label. <laughs> That's not unusual for me. Now this is one of my great crops for the year I think. This is my Barlotti beans. I've never grown them before. But if you have a look, you should be able to see I've got lots and lots of lovely pods here. And I'm just going to let them dry a bit and uh, save the beans and use them in soups and, well, not, not soups, stews, I think, over the, over the winter. Uh, I don't know how many I'll get out of this, but uh, I think there was two, four, six, eight, maybe ten plants in here. So I don't know whether this is a good cropper or not, but there just does seem to be quite a lot here. So I'm quite happy with them. I've got an autumn cropping variety of raspberry here, and you can see that I've got some rasps that are nowhere near ripe at the moment, but at least I've got some rasps. It's its first year as well, so we'll see how that goes in, in subsequent years. Here we have a couple of cabbages that I am trying to grow in pots, and they're looking mighty healthy, I think. I've got these uh, little anti-slug halos that I think are doing the trick. Uh, I think we need to give them a wee water, but they're looking good, and I've been—I haven't seen any anything eating them. Although I can see a hole there, but I haven't seen any caterpillars or anything on them. So, uh, because there's only a couple of them, it's quite easy to to work that out. And then just further along, here's one of my Brussels sprouts. The Brussels sprouts are definitely getting eaten. Uh, there's not much in the way of slug and snail trails. So, is this something else? I, there was some caterpillars on this. I did pick them off and I haven't seen any since, but it's, you know, thereafter I've started to get a lot of the foliage being eaten. So, but I don't see anything on here. I don't think anyway. No, unless there's anything hiding in there. But yeah, it's getting eaten to kingdom come, unfortunately. We do have little Brussels forming, but I don't know whether 
because the leaves are getting so eaten that I'm not going to get these forming proper proper sprouts or not. We shall see. Here's another one of the, the Brussels. It's looking a lot healthier. There's only a couple of nibbled leaves on this. And again, you can see the Brussels there. First time for me growing Brussels sprouts and I've got a few in large pots. So it's it's all a bit of a an experiment, I guess. Up on this plastic shelf, I have two pots of Eskimo carrots, which are looking really nice and healthy. When did I sow these? 11th of July. And yeah, uh, we'll see how they, they go. They've a bit to grow yet. And then in here, there's some white radish, some mooley that, uh, nothing to speak of yet, but, promising. Now we're on the patio now and there's a number of dahlias. They've suffered a, a fair amount of wind damage actually because we had a spate of some really heavy winds but uh, so that they are a little bit skew with but I am getting some nice some nice flowers. Now I've found the name of that. It is Great Silence, this one. This is called Great Silence. And it looks like I've got some more Great Silence over here. Then we have Bishop's Children, which is looking nice. And here, what you called, what you called? I don't know, darn. This nice peach coloured one. And then we've got a burgundy one over here. Now this really is leaning over. That's um, a bit done. Is there a better one down here? So a cactus type, I think you would call that. So yeah, the dahlias are doing nice. They're doing well. And here's a teddy bear sunflower. I managed to get one to, to flowering that didn't get eaten by things. I do love the teddy bear. Very cute. Now, am I just sh shadow everywhere? Sorry about that, folks. Here we have two pots of potatoes. These are heritage potatoes. Uh, this is Yukon Gold. And this one is Mr... What's it called again? Mr Little's Yetum Gypsy. So I'm hoping to get some potatoes later in the year towards Christmas, maybe. So we shall see. Hey girls. Beep, 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 beep. These perennial Rudbeckia are looking rather nice. They're plain, but when you get them in a, a big clump like this, I think they look quite striking. And here's some other Rudbeckia that need a bit of deadheading. And if I just go further down the garden, I've got more potatoes in this pallet collar bed. These are Pentland Javelin, but they're getting munched, unfortunately. <coughs> yeah. Twig. So yeah, what's munching these? Do we think, is it just slugs or snails or is it something else? I'm not great on my pests, I have to say. So we'll see if we get these to give us a harvest or not. I think I tried it in the autumn last year in this bed and just its location seemed to, didn't seem to lend itself to a good crop. We do, however, have a sunflower that's growing all the way up there, a bit mildewy, but you can see it is there. So that is about seven feet, I think. It's not humongous, because if you, it's, you know, the, there's a, 
a foot or so bef until we're at the base of the, the sunflower and then it goes up. I'm guessing, maybe about seven feet tall. It's, it's not hugely tall. And we have another sunflower here, if I just swing round, just in a pot, um, a bit nibbled. And it's a multi-headed one. I think this is a sunburst. So you might be able to see there, they're not quite out yet, but there's three heads at the top there. Again, not hugely tall, maybe seven feet or so. This sedum's looking really nice. It's sort of falling out onto the path, but it's beautiful. And the good thing about sedum is it dies back into just a low, a low growing clump over the winter and then comes back again year after year. And this, it just goes from strength to strength. Right, in here we have beetroot, I hope. I put lots of, can you see through there? Lots of anti-slug and snail defences in here. Put oyster shell, beer traps, and that sort of copper mesh around. Ah, uh, but the slugs have been nibbling at things. So quite frankly, I have just left it to its own devices. And if we get some beetroot, I think we'll get some in the middle clump there. Don't know about the little baby ones, or maybe just put them out a little bit small. But we'll see. Here's a begonia that's looking awesome. Right, if we just walk up the, the path here to my two sleeper beds. In this one I have some leeks. These are cairngorm, I think they're called. You can see the top of my beer trap has been blown off. We had, as I said earlier, I think, quite a lot of wind. And then we have some turnip in these little boxes. And this brown stuff is wool, sheep's wool pellets. Uh, you can see I'm still getting eaten by slugs though. In here is some cabbages. I have three that are looking quite healthy and one that's looking a bit eaten. So I've sort of left the eaten one in there in the hope that anything that's going to eat things will eat that rather than the others. But I've got three healthy looking ones in there, so hopefully I can get them to produce some sort of heart at some point. A little cosmos just here. Not loads of flowers and um, a lot of them have been battered in the weather, but I do love this colour. This sort of pink with the cerise in the centre. So it's very pretty. And here's a little red robin tomato plant. A little bush variety. Very, very small, but so prolific. So, so prolific. Unbelievable number of tomatoes that I've got off this. I've got a separate little video that I've recorded about harvesting some tomatoes. So um, if you have a look at that, it'll probably follow this one. Um, and you'll just see me harvesting some tomatoes just a couple of days ago from this. And more wind damage. Look at these gladioli all sort of falling and uh, hanging over the ponds. But look at the colour of this one. Absolutely amazing. Here's one of my favourite hookeras, which has been doing mighty fine, thank you very much. Just quite happily growing and actually not getting chomped by the chickens, which is great. And then here's my humongous uh, hydrangea flowers. But you see they're going over now, so I've just left them to it. I should really deadhead, give it a bit of a, a prune. They've done really, really well.
Here's another cabbage. It's Dutchman and it's actually sitting in a pot in a hanging basket and this is just my attempt at trying to keep it away from uh, pests. And it's looking okay I think at the moment, a couple of wee nibbles here and there. Next to it though is a very wind-beaten uh, gladioli or set of gladioli. Some of them I've already taken indoors, uh, which I tend to do with this plant because it just is a bit ugly looking because <laughs> it's got so beaten up. So I just cut off the flower heads and take them indoors and, and enjoy them in there instead. Here's another tomato plant. This one is Gardener's Delight. And I have harvested some of the tomatoes, quite a number, but I think I've left these a little bit long. And some of them are a little bit dinky. Um, I didn't really give it the care and attention I should have, truth be known. And if I just swing round and have a look in the uh, plastic grow house, there's a few things in here that need to have things happening. This is um, spring onions. This is white Lisbon. So I want to really get those out into a bed somewhere or into a container. And then down here we have um, cabbage April. Some of them are looking a bit hard done by and that's probably because they're bone dry. Um, but there's a couple that I'll salvage and put somewhere safe. It's funny, this weather really gives you a false sense of security. You have wind and, and rain um, and you think, oh, everything's going to be soaking. But sometimes uh, it's not quite that bad. And then if you don't water, you get this. <laughs> Whoops. But anyway, there's a couple there that I can salvage. I don't have room to grow too many anyway. So hopefully a slightly quicker garden tour this month. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed uh, having a look around and just seeing what's growing and what's not in the garden here in the west of Scotland uh, at sort of third week in September. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe. It's free and it just means that you can um, keep track of the, the videos that I put up. And if you ring the little bell, you get alerted every time I put a video up. So um, I'll call a halt for now and uh, I'll talk to you again very, very soon. So bye bye. <music>